Guruji. Mm -hmm. When we had the recent retreat, and during the last day, a lot of uh, unexpected fear came up because I thought I was doing pretty well, you know? Yes. And there was a lot of stuff coming up, so I raised my hand to actually ask you a question to offer up everything, including myself. Yes. Yes, because I noticed that it's not good to hold on to, you know, it has to come up. But, uh, yes. to actually offer it up and to go through with everything to just be able to pop back, you know? Yes, yes. So and, I and, just like to say it again uh, since I have the chance. Yes, so. yes. And by the grace of your satsang and the deep urge within, we understand that these things are being highlighted and are swimming up into the onto the screen of consciousness. So they are they are they are detected. And the screen is not just like the regular two dimensional screen, it's actually quite an energetic screen. And uh, so in it is contained uh, or not just all the thoughts that come, but the one for whom they come, the person, the sense of the person, personal identity, who have relationship with them. We must not forget that. I always am reminding. That we are not just experienced people say, I'm having this mind attack and so on. I said, OK, let's begin there. The mind attack can be coming up. And who is the one being attacked? Is that the one who is witnessing all of this? Or can the one who is seemingly being attacked by the mind also perceivable? You see? It's more subtle because normally, you know, it's not. Uh, it's not the body that's really under being under attack, although it can actually move into the bodily realm as well. So in the body, you'll feel the kind of energetic presence of some sense of disturbance and so on. But the sense of the person is very close to that. The sense of I, me, and the one who is why me, this 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 person also is the is seem to be the the subject of the attack that being attacked. I'm asking everyone like this, that sense of attack and the one who is caught up in it or who feels under attack, is that one not also on the screen or not also perceivable? If I say to you, be aware of all that is arising in the mind through the senses or mind or imagination, be aware of all of that, all the movements that come through form and time is playing in front, all the association of memory and emotion and thought and time and identity, all of that are perceivable phenomenon, witnessed. And you can say, actually, we assume that the witness of them is the person who suffers them. And that would be reasonable to say, this the person who is suffering them who is also witnessing them. But I would say the person, the personal sense also, is a sensation also that is perceived in the conscious field. And because we are unaccustomed to seeing in this way, some resistance may come, or someone may say, but that's that's very difficult for to 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 imagine because, you know, of course it's happening to me. But I'm saying that even the sense of me itself is phenomenal, appearing in a, 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 an impersonal seeing space. Has anyone caught hold of that? Yes, I know, James, I've done that. Yes, yes, uh, Vera. That you begin to see, because this is the fruit, the sweet fruit of your satsang, is to catch, you know, catch hold of the, the sense of the personal identity. Uh, without whom the mind and its judgments is not alive. It seems to be the personal identity is also an aspect of mind. Between mind and being, it's there. And if this if this recognition doesn't happen, then the drama will persist. It will keep coming until you recognize that. Wait a second. It's just another uh, another sensation. But if I say like this and you don't grasp it, 
it doesn't quite sink in. It's almost as though there's some energy, some habit that seems not to want or seem to distract the attention away from exposing this limited self. That the limited self and its world are like two sides of one coin being perceived from a very empty space within yourself. Unchanging. I'm calling the witnessing also. Is not a person. Therefore, it is not reacting. The, the witness is not reacting. So all the emotional reaction, the mental and psychological reactions, they are also to be seen on the same screen. That they are perceivable on the screen of consciousness. I want to know if you grasp this. See, if you really grasp this, huh, then all that trouble, the mind, I don't know what's happening to me, and the identity, that will begin to dissolve in its impact. This singular observation. Just now I'm speaking the same thing. I was leaving uh, to come down here, and saying again, reminding, what is the one thing, if I had to impart something to you, we don't have much time to give you the greatest advice, what it would be. And I said that uh, it would be that whatever arises as mind, that you begin to observe it dispassionately. Don't get involved, as though you are a mere witness on the scene. Even a witness that appears in court can only be entitled a witness if they keep out of the crime scene, just impartially seeing and reporting. The minute you get involved in it, you are not a witness anymore. You become part of the scene. So observe with detachment. Don't cling to the sense of personhood. Just be a detached witness and observe. Don't log into the mind wave. You can do it and stay with it. And you may experience that mind will come with so much juicy invitations to say, connect. Just, just click, just click, save. Just click, enter. You see? But you are also to notice that and just see with, it, with, with an equanimity of observation. And at some point, not long, all of that will seem not claustrophobic anymore and will drift away some space. And what will be left here is the, the full presence of presence. The health of your being, uncomplicated, formless, perfectly at peace. Witnessing merely happening, it is not even a doing, it is just occurring in the presence of a deeper awareness. Just this I would give. I want to, I want to. Uh, to speak to those who I meet like that, that we are just meeting at the bus stop, we are meeting at the train station, we are getting separate trains. What can I share with you that could be the most important discovery of your life? That kind of meeting I like. But to move into your house or live next door, I don't need to do that. Just your undivided attention, acute, and uh, an earnest is enough to for what to 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 break the spell a twist in understanding to see that everything that is perceivable in you is a, a movement that you need not cling to a movement appearing in the unmoving and that your place is the unmoving but as long as you have treasured dreams and projections, you will stay loyal to personal identity, which you need to accomplish your projections. So therefore, often those who transcend are those who have lost faith in the world, faith in the mind, faith in the person. 
but you needn't go so far. What if I told you your true being is eternally free, imperishable? I'm not playing your compliment, speaking simply the truth. But until somehow that connects in awareness, as your experiential verified truth, it will only remain in you as words, if it even remain with you. And what I'm sharing is the most natural, the most simple, because it is so already, simply that we are unaware of it. And why are we unaware of it? Because we have become aware of an idea of ourselves shaped in personhood, that we are the body and our conditioning. Even that does not hold up, because the body is changing, conditioning is changing. And something witnesses that which is changing. Can the same witness witness that which is unchanging? Can that which witnesses impermanence witness permanence? Can it? Impermanence is easy to witness. Even a fool, given the opportunity, will admit that which is unstable is easily witnessed. You get a point for that. But if you can see that that which witnesses the, the unstable cannot itself be witnessed phenomenally or visually, why? Because the witness is it, that you are it, then that is worth a million pints. But you're not in the points game. How far has my words reached inside you? If you merely gargle with them in your mouth, they will also be easily spat out. Even in hearing, even hearing them before fully employing them inside your heart, they shall wipe the screen of the mind empty. Just if your heart is open to them, though it will not be enough, but it will be a mighty shift in your fortune. The pure self can never be altered, or weakened, or fade. Those words don't pertain to it. In fact, nothing in the conceptual world affects it. And yet it is the cause, the singular cause, of all things perceived. I may ask you, what is your deepest wish? If you are even in touch with it enough to be honest about it. Because if someone should admit my highest wish, my highest and most impatient wish, is to be free from the influence of my psychological identity. And I said, then what's the next wish? And you tell me something in the world. I'll say you will not accomplish it, because the one desire you have for the world will so fight to distract your attention, or offer that right away.
perhaps the one thing that obscures or makes what I'm saying seem remote is the idea and the conviction you hold that you are a person getting somewhere. Anyhow, I just stopped by to say hello. I hope I have not frustrated your time. Lovely to see you. Love you all. Love you.